Hi dear students, so today we have come with a new video of class 6. In the previous class we have discussed about time and temperature. In the portion of temperature we have learned about the units and the relation between them. And today we have to discuss about the device by which we can able to measure the temperature. So we all know what is the name of the device. The device is thermo meter which is used to measure the temperature of a body okay so we can write what is thermometer it is a device by which the temperature of a body is measured okay so that is the work of thermometer but the question has come to our mind why the name is thermometer it may be some another the reason is that this thermometer this name has come by two Greek letters first one is thermos and second one is metron. Okay, thermos means hot. Okay, and metron means measure. So that's why by the help of thermometer, we can able to measure the hotness or the coldness of a body. And that's why we can use thermometer to measure the temperature. Now we are coming to the next part that is the description of thermometer. Description means how it looks, how it works, that is. So whenever we are talking about the description, let's see how the thermometer looks. So it is a glass tube, it is fully made by glass and in this portion the mercury is kept. And this is a very small tube that is known as capillary. It is a capillary tube. Now coming to the step by step portion. This portion it is known as bulb. Inside the bulb one liquid is kept that is known as thermometric liquid. And here as a thermometric liquid generally we keep mercury now there is also some reason that why we have used mercury in thermometer but that reason i will explain little later okay so in the bulb we have kept a liquid and as a thermometric liquid and here generally we have kept it mercury okay and now this is a capillary tube what is known a capillary tube and what is the name like that See, in a Latin word, capillus, that means here. Okay, so capillary means if I have made a tube whose radius is very small, just like the radius of here, so that type of tube is known as capillary tube. And the capillary tube inside the thermometer is known as steam. Okay, so that is the physical description of the thermometer. Okay, so a glass tube, it's a bulb and inside it a capillary tube. Okay, now the question has come how it works. So as the mercury is kept inside the bulb, whenever this bulb is just make a contact with a body whose heat energy is more then it will absorb some heat 
Okay, so as it absorbs some heat, its temperature will be increased. And we have learned in the previous class, when the temperature of a body is increased, it just expands. So whose expansion is more? That also we have learned that maximum expansion is occurred for the case of gas and minimum expansion is occurred for the case of solid. And you know mercury is a liquid, so it also expands through the capillary. Okay, it also expands through the capillary. And when it stops, it will show that this will be the temperature of the body with which the bulb is keep in contact. Clear? Now the question has come. So you have told this will be the temperature, but how we have to measure the temperature? There is no scaling. So without scaling, if a wooden block, wooden uh, rod is given to you or an iron rod is given to you can you be able to measure a length no because there is no scaling so here also we have to make the scaling how you have to apply scaling here so to apply scaling you have to put the bulb inside ice okay we have to put the bulb inside ice we know the temperature of ice is 0 degree centigrade. So whenever we have to keep it inside the ice, then this mercury will contract. Because due to the increase of temperature when a body expands, due to the decrease of temperature, the body contract. So the mercury will contract and assume it will come here. It will reach in this point. So in this point, we have to mention that is zero degree centigrade so when we have to put the bulb inside the ice where the mercury will be fixed inside the capillary that point will be zero degree centigrade clear next we will just remove the ice and then we have to put it inside the boiling water we know the boiling water has much temperature than ice so what will happen? The mercury will again expand and it will expand up to a certain limit. Assume here the mercury will expand. So when the mercury will expand and just fix at a certain point, that temperature will be 100 degrees centigrade because we know the temperature of boiling water is 100 degrees centigrade. Okay, so that is this ice point. We have learned earlier and this is the steam point. So the difference between 0 to 100, it is 100, that is 100 minus 0. Now what we have to do, now in between 0 to 100, we have to make 100 equal divisions. That is 100 scaling we have to make here. Okay, 100 divisions equal divisions we have to make here and then we will get a scaling and now it is easier for us to measure the temperature of any un uh, measure any unknown temperature with the help of the thermometer so it is the basic description of thermometer by which we can able to use it and measure the temperature of the body okay As we have discussed about the mercury thermometer, here we have to see the types of mercury thermometer. Types of mercury thermometer. In generally, means in our use, there are two kinds of mercury thermometers are there. First one, it is known as laboratory thermometer. And second one, it is clinical thermometer. See, both in both the thermometer, we have used the mercury. So both are mercury thermometers, but there are differences between them. So the differences we have to discuss later, but before that we have to learn 
what is the use of laboratory thermometer so by the name laboratory we can say that this thermometer is mainly used in laboratory for experimental purpose to measure the temperature of an object okay so as the laboratory name is here so it is clear that this thermometer it is mainly used in laboratory so in laboratory whatever we have done we have done many more experiments okay so many more scientific experiments we need the temperature of a body so in that case we have used laboratory thermometer to measure the temperature of an object and where in clinical thermometer by the name it is clear that clinical that means it is used by the doctors and most of you i think everyone we have seen this thermometer and it is used many a times in our body okay so this thermometer is used to measure the temperature of human body again i am telling both the thermometers are mercury thermometer but their uses are different laboratory thermometer it is used to make some experiment to find the temperature of an object in laboratory and clinical thermometer it is used by the doctors to measure the temperature of the human body now we have to discuss what are the characteristics of laboratory thermometer let's see so as we have told that characteristics of laboratory thermometer so first we have to see how laboratory thermometer looks so the thermometer we have drawn earlier the laboratory thermometer is also looks like the same okay there is no difference between them all the thermometer the basic design is same okay this is the capillary so in the previous class one student has asked about the capillary so capillary is a small tube which is having a smaller radius okay now first characteristic is that number one that is the range range means from which temperature to which temperature can be measured with the help of laboratory thermometer so the range of laboratory thermometer is minus 10 degree centigrade to 110 degree centigrade so we can see it's a long range so with the help of laboratory thermometer we can use minus 10 degree centigrade to 110 degree centigrade this much long range we can able to measure the temperature of a body okay that is the first characteristics of laboratory thermometer that is the range okay and if i'm talking about the size of a laboratory thermometer it is almost one feet so here i'm not having any laboratory thermometer with me definitely whenever we will meet in school please make me remember i will show you the laboratory thermometer from our lab okay one laboratory thermometer is there that i'll show you okay number two number two is that is the process uh, by which we have to measure the laboratory thermometer in that process one characteristics are given that is to measure the temperature of a body with the help of a 
laboratory thermometer comma the thermometer should be always keep in contact with the object at the time of measurement so what i'm just want to tell by this statement that whenever you have to measure the temperature of a body with the help of laboratory thermometer in that case you always have to make contact the body with the thermometer uh, especially we can say the bulb of the thermometer the bulb of thermometer should always be keep in contact with the object just like see an example i am having some water in a beaker okay assume that water is kept and you see the bulb is always connected with the water assume here a stand is given so that we can able to fix the thermometer here okay so assume the temperature of water is 50 degree centigrade so assume here it is 50 degree centigrade and to see this temperature you have to connect the bulb always with the water if it is not water if it is another object then also the same thing you have to make contact the bulb with the object otherwise you cannot able to see the temperature now the question has come why why you have to always connect with the object the reason is that due to absorbing the heat energy from the object the expansion of the mercury is occurred through this capillary tube that we have all known in the previous part we have discussed also but when we have just taken this thermometer out then what will happen you know that mercury that due to the attraction of gravity this mercury coming down so as it is connected it is taking heat energy and so that's why it is expand and it will reach at the point and it is fixed whenever you have to take it out from the water so that time so mercury is a liquid so due to the force of gravity means we all know that earth is attracting everything towards itself so due to the attraction of gravity that whole mercury will come and then it will reach at bulb so we're not able to see the exact temperature so that's why whenever we have to use the thermometer it is always should keep contact the bulb of the thermometer should maintain contact with the object one more thing i'll make you remember here in the previous part whenever we have discussed about the physical quantities and measurement first topic that is the length we have to use scale that time i have told that whenever we have to see the reading we have to fix our eyes perpendicular to the point where the level of the mercury has come perpendicularly if i keep our eyes here or here there will be a error and what will be the name of the error that you all know that is known as error of parallax okay so to get rid of this error of parallax we have to see the reading perfect to keep our eyes perpendicular to the level of the mercury so that our measurement of temperature will be perfect so that is the characteristics of laboratory thermometer now we'll go for clinical thermometer let's see next we will discuss about the characteristics of clinical thermometer so what is the difference with clinical thermometer 
to laboratory thermometer that you will understand whenever we have to discuss about the characteristics. First of all, to tell the truth, the size of the clinical thermometer is very smaller than the laboratory thermometer. I have kept here one clinical thermometer to show you. So that is the size of a clinical thermometer. And I have told for the case of a laboratory thermometer, it will be almost one feet or more than one feet. So it is a clinical thermometer. Let's see the characteristics. So it is, you see, it is made by glass here. This is the bulb and that is a capillary. Okay. So let's show it to you. So the diagram, if I just want to modify here, I have to modify in this place only. Okay. So initially, whenever we have seen the uh, laboratory thermometer, we have seen that whole stem that is kept in a straight line. But I have bent it here a little bit. That is known as kink. Okay, and this kink means a constriction. Constriction means a bending. I have made a bending here. I have not keep it a straight line. I have make a bend. Why? What is the reason? That will come. But before that, we have to learn about the range of clinical thermometer. See, it is clear that body temperature of a human being is not varied very much. So that's why the range, it will starting from 35 degrees centigrade and it will end it at 42 degrees centigrade. Okay, so we can write that it is 35 degrees centigrade to 42 degree centigrade. That is the range of a clinical thermometer in degree centigrade. But in general, whenever we have to use the clinical thermometer, we measure the temperature in Fahrenheit. We have told now, now my fever is 100, 101. So that is not in between 35 to 42. So in general, we measure the temperature in Fahrenheit. So in Fahrenheit, the range will be 95 degree Fahrenheit to 110 degree Fahrenheit. Okay. So it is 95 degree Fahrenheit to 110 degree Fahrenheit. So this is the range of clinical thermometer. Okay. Now, one important thing we have to mention here, that is the normal temperature of human body. So there is a normal temperature of human body. If we exceed that temperature, that means we are ill. Okay, that means there is a fever. Or if we below that temperature, then we are okay. Or if it is at that temperature, then we are okay. So if you see the thermometer here, that one digit, it is written in red. Okay, or in some thermometer, there is a red arrow given at a certain point. So what is that point that I will show you? Okay, so that point is here at 37 degree centigrade or in Fahrenheit, it is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so 98.6 degree Fahrenheit or 37 degree Fahrenheit, this is the normal temperature of human body that is 37 degree centigrade or 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. If your temperature is increased more than that, then you are ill. Okay, so you are having some temperature, so you will just go to the doctor and take medicine. Okay, if it is equal to this temperature or below, then we can say that you are fully uh, we can say fit okay coming to the next point number three how we can use the clinical thermometer to measure the temperature generally the bulb of the clinical thermometer it is kept under the tongue 
or under the armpit okay so if we keep under the tongue the tongue is there we can put the thermometer under the tongue also sometime or sometime we have put it under the armpit so in generally we have seen it is kept under the armpit because uh, see we are not using different different thermometer for different different patients okay so we generally we use one thermometer for different patients so same thermometer how much we can able to wash it to put it anyone's mouth and then keep it to another person's mouth it is uh, something little difficult so that's why we generally kept it under the armpit what is the difference in temperature under the tongue the temperature we get it is more okay and under the armpit it is little less so as you in under the armpit you will show the temperature 100 degree fahrenheit so actually your body temperature is then 101 degree fahrenheit because under the armpit it will show little less temperature okay that is the story but here there is a problem what is the problem as you you have kept that thermometer what we are having you have put it someone's armpit and you just want to see it just like the laboratory thermometer so it is fixed here and you want to see it by looking here so it is little bit of difficult for a doctor okay so how we have to see but generally we have seen what that he has taken it out after one minute or two minutes and then he has shown the thermometer now the problem is that for the case of laboratory thermometer i have told that whenever we have to measure the temperature the bulb should always keep in contact with the body otherwise the whole mercury which is raised by getting the heat energy from the body if i have taken it it will fall in down but for the case of clinical thermometer it is not occurred in clinical thermometer we generally taken out from the armpit and then see why it is occurred that's why this king okay this king has made to hold the mercury the king in stem of clinical thermometer is used to hold the mercury level okay that means if you taken it from a body also the mercury level will not get fallen because there is a bend so if it want to fall this bed will prevent it then you might be asking sir then it will reach here then if i want to measure the temperature of another patient then how we have to make it lower okay at least it will reach below the normal temperature then i can able to measure the temperature of the another patients so in that case what we have done you know this is the thermometer we generally jerk it like this way okay so if we jerk the mercury goes down and it reaches to the bulb okay so we jerk it so that is the reason for jerking you have seen that the doctors used to jerk the thermometer the reason is that they want to send the mercury to the bulb okay that is the reason behind it but nowadays apart from this mercury thermometer there are many more thermometers are used one thermometer i have just kept here to you to show you so it is also one kind of thermometer here also you see the bulb is there but it is not a mercury thermometer it is a digital thermometer okay so as you want to see the temperature of a body you have to put this bulb under the armpit okay and you see here the temperature is increased okay so now the temperature is from 97.4 so i am not ill okay so by that we can see the temperature here no mercury is there it works based on the basis of some another instruments or another property another uh, 
basic things are there okay so here no mercury is used okay what is used you have to learn later so that is our digital thermometer but apart from this digital thermometer nowadays we have seen the thermal guns are here so due to the corona you have seen that uh, in airports or in uh, in the case of you can see for uh, railway station so one person is holding a substance and just uh, facing it to the person and by that the temperature of the person we can able to see that thermometer is also with me but it is not in my room now uh, i will show you in the next video how a thermal gun works okay so that is all about the clinical thermometer okay so now we will discuss the difference between clinical thermometer and laboratory thermometer but before that one common question has come so that common question we will discuss first and then we'll go for the difference okay so common question is why does the clinical thermometer not use to measure the temperature of boiling water okay that's a very common question that can we able to use this mercury thermometers we have shown here the clinical thermometer to measure the temperature of the boiling water our answer should be no why the reason is that the temperature of boiling water we all know that is 100 degree centigrade but if I'm talking about the maximum temperature can be measured by clinical thermometer that is 42 degrees centigrade. So maximum range it is already written that is 42 degrees centigrade and maximum temperature the temperature of the boiling water is 100 degrees centigrade which is much greater. So if you put the clinical thermometer inside the boiling water what will happen you know the mercury will just increase so fast and this portion that will be broken okay and that mercury will come in outside and that clinical thermometer will be out of order okay because the range is 42 we were not able to measure 100 degree centigrade with the help of that temperature with the help of that thermometer so that's why the clinical thermometer is not used to measure the temperature of boiling water okay the difference between laboratory thermometer and clinical thermometer so number one difference is very clear that it is used to measure the temperature of an object in lab lab means laboratory so it is used to measure the temperature of an object in lab for experimental purpose so we can mention here for experimental purpose and here for clinical thermometer we can say it is used to measure the temperature of human body okay number two range we know that it is minus 10 degree centigrade to 
110 degree centigrade for the case of laboratory thermometer and here the range is in degree centigrade it is 35 degree centigrade to 42 degree centigrade okay that is the difference between clinical thermometer and laboratory thermometer and number three there is no kink in the stem of it okay and number three here there is a kink in the stem of it so what is kink i have already told kink is a bending of capillary tube okay so that the mercury level it will not fall in down it is possible for the case of clinical thermometer now you might be thinking sir if it is possible for clinical thermometer so if i give a king to laboratory thermometer then here also it, it can be hold so it will not fall in down it is not possible because i have already told the laboratory thermometer is having a long length okay so the amount of mercury inside it it is also more so that's why whenever once it will hold at a height if you make a kink also for laboratory thermometer that cannot able to hold it because the length is more so that's why the amount of mercury is more so more mercury more weight that's why it is coming downward but for the clinical thermometer you have shown it is very small so the amount of mercury is also very small so that's why the kink will work here so the king can able to hold the mercury at a certain height which is not possible for laboratory mercury so this is the these are the difference between laboratory thermometer and the clinical thermometer okay